I am perceiving the creation with renewed conviction, deliberating over whether I'd been taught a misnomer of lies, the likes of which had formerly entrenched my educational bias towards habitation upon a spherical earth, comparison to every globe sitting atop a teacher's desk. As inheritors of the grand matrix, we as children are indoctrinated into speculative assumptions based upon a carefully crafted web of deceit, so all-consuming is my postulation that we live on a planetary globe truly warranted. Awakening makes one question everything thought relevant, all that one had once so innocently accepted in assurance as evidentiary truth. All must be reassessed upon the certainty that there is no absolute truth when evaluating the preponderance of lies emblazoned unto our unquestioned resolve as clean child mind slate. And so once again I find myself in that zone of nihilist persuasion, reality shattered and manifest knowing shaken to the core, deliberating over what I thought seminal truth. This challenge strikes at the core of who and where we are as people, our most foundational belief of living upon a blue marble, and that we're spinning counterclockwise in a similarly rotating planetary system with angelic sun as its vibrant diamond center. We are informed that primordially ejected bodies spit out from the core of stars result in planetary accretion, and that the Earth as cosmological debris gravitationally attracted enough mass to assume orbit as planet around our sun, itself contained in another greater orbit around some grand universal center. A theoretical black hole science asserts, though no one has ever seen, of such immense pull, light cannot escape its destroying grasp. Have I? Have we all been held hostage to some secret societal Freemasonic accord, a pervasive deception so colossal that only those in the know understand planetary situation? And do the global elite celebrate such manipulation, honoring such conquests? flaunting insider knowledge and privilege, flying the United Nations flag with depiction of a flat earth holding all nations in singular, circular embrace. Near the building which best represents their assertion of power, the UN building and throne of world government and new world order. Hello friends, I'm your host Sam Garcia, this is Fallen Angels TV, and this is fourth in a series uh, that I've done on this particular topic, and I promise to leave it alone after this particular show, um, unless I find some just extremely relevant and important information that I need to share with you, or I have as guests um, one of those individuals that is on the cutting edge of this as topic, um, because it seems like it is um, being hyped up by the mainstream as far as and conspiratorial press, I mean the mainstream alternative and conspiratorial um, as far as media outlets, and that 
for some reason, it is being brought to the forefront of the collective conscience of those that do this kind of research and and this kind of investigation and and so that was that was one of the reasons why I myself decided to actually give it a go and to take some time to uh, to really investigate it with an open mind suspending my former educational bias, as I mentioned in poem, and um, I really didn't think it would pan out to anything at all, and that I would, in, in the most, waste one evening or one day of research um, and find enough evidentiary truth to just dismiss it altogether as possibility. And so, um, li- deciding to listen to my listeners and deciding to um, actually watch a few of the videos that they had sent me, um, I was led to more questions than answers. And I was compelled to do greater investigation and to spend more time on really looking into this as ample possibility. And so, um, and I'm also going to, just so you know, I'm going to answer the rest of the questions that you had posted in chat room that I'd never got chance to get into last show. And I have a little bit more time today. And so I'll be able to do that as well as I want to share a few other things. Um, Certain passages from the scripture which also describe what we see as um, a model for the earth and those that a lot of people um, cite when they believe that, you know, that the Bible is talking about a round or spherical earth. And I'm also going to release today um, a Bible code, which I discovered because that's one of the things that I do now whenever I get into a topic that is highly controversial and um, what a lot of people consider to be unscriptural, like the after the publication of my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain, I was led to seek out a code and actually discovered it. And not only one, but seven matrices, which um, confirmed the premise of that book. And these are kind of things, you know, the whole equal letter sequencing, uh, the mathematical code, which is has to be totally divinely inspired that is found within the the Hebrew Torah. And if you don't know how all that works out, I'm not going to go into it in any great depth uh, on this particular show because there's so much I want to cover. But basically, it's um, you skip a certain amount of letters and you put the first five books of the scriptures, the Torah, the Pentateuch, all together without any space. You just run them all together in um, one long, um, just like one long sentence. And then with the use of a computer, you can get it to keyword search certain things, you know, like how we used to do those uh, hidden crossword puzzles, not crossword puzzles, but hidden word searches in elementary school where you would seek them out diagonally, horizontal, vertical, um, and and that you could, you could find, you know, certain words this way. Well, the Bible code works in similar fashion, and so I was able to find... Uh, a code, and I'm going to 
paste a link for it and you can pull it up for yourself. And you can also do this same research for yourself to confirm that I had indeed found it. And you can see the keywords that I searched, which in my opinion are confirmation of this as concept. And uh, for those that have access to the chat room, I did post a link there. You can click click it, and it'll take you to a website called BibleCodeWisdom.com, which allows you to search out codes without first having to download any software or buy or purchase any software. And it also allows you to not have to know Hebrew and to be able to search out codes in English, which is very relevant for uh, individuals like myself that are not um, able to, you know, decipher the Hebrew and the the translations. Um, That's not exactly true, Cersei. Cersei says you can pull a code from anything, and that's absolutely not true at all. Uh, In fact, Uh, And especially when you have multiple words, you might be able to find one or two words. And and certainly there are other books that, you know, codes have been found in. But uh, when you have a numerous number of words, um, you cannot find codes just in any document. But anyways, I'm not going to deliberate over that with you. Um, But the code that I found has these keywords. And you can pull it up for yourself and look, you know, find it. and, And I felt like all of these keywords are um, essential to this as topic. First, Flat, of course, flat, earth, and then canopy, tent, because Isaiah 40 describes the the earth as a circle and that the heavens, um, you know, as a curtain above and, and that it's like a tent. And also truth, ring, because um, it's my opinion that Isaiah 40, what it's describing as the circle of the earth is a is a ring not a sphere not a globe or um or a ball which um one of the things I'll also cover today is some of the strong's concordance on that particular passage we'll go into that next um but ring and edge and even like the way flat, you know, the earth being flat or even. And also a dome, which, uh, like tent, you know, it describes um, the heavens as being spread out like a curtain and that we are living on this disc or this um, plane, this flat earth plane, that the heavens are over us like a, a dome or a canopy or you know in that the the earth as a model together with the heavens the celestial heavens uh is like a tent as it's described in Isaiah 40 and so you can see all of these key words are similar um as far as this particular topic and the you know usually if usually you don't find more than three or four words in a matrix in a matrix when you're searching out a bible code and so i believe it's very relevant that i was able to find all of these words all together in, in all in a similar um you know, as far as proximity to each other, uh, compiling and making this one particular matrix. And I I was also able to find the word disk, um, but you can't 
fit all of these words together. But I searched out a couple other words by deleting some of these. And so that's another one that you can find with it. But um, the Bible Code Wisdom software only allows you to search a, a certain number of keywords. And so if you, once again, go to BibleCodeWisdom.com, search flat earth canopy tent truth ring edge even and dome it'll pull up um it will confirm that this matrix is found in the code and that it overlays the gospel of luke um beginning chapter 13 verse 28 and is spread out um, as matrix from Luke 13.8 to Luke 14.4. And so I thought it was interesting. And another thing about the matrix, when you pull it out, you'll see it's not just because all the words when you're searching for a matrix, they're all put together horizontally and then just like a, a line after line after line. Well, none of these words were just found horizontally. They were, you had to find them using the ELS, the equal letter sequencing. And they all go diagonal um, and that there's, you know, great distances between some of those um, equal letter sequencing, and some of them, you know, just four or five letters as far as the skip sequence. But you can see how all of them are found diagonally, or if they are horizontal, they are not, you know, side by side as in a word found in the, you know, the regular scriptures as far as the Torah, but that they are encoded. So anyways, um, that's one of the things that I thought was very interesting about this particular subject and the study of it. Now, I want to go to um I want to go to this Isaiah 40 and look at it a little bit closer using Strong's. And I'm also going to paste a link in the chat room for the because you can do the Strong's Concordance research online as well without having to have a book. Or to purchase the software or anything of that nature. Um, the website is blueletterbible.org. Let me post that in the chat room real quick. Blue Letter Bible dot org and it lets you search uh using the Strong's or other biblical tools. All right. And so looking a little bit closer at this Isaiah chapter forty, verse twenty one twenty two. The scripture that a lot of people use to um, confirm that the Bible, you know, is basically describing a spherical earth when, in my opinion, when you look at the words using the Strong's and go back to the original Hebrew, that's not what it's talking about at all. But it's actually talking about the circle of the earth as being a flat earth plane. Um, a, a, a disc, or like a plate. All right, so let's read that, and then we'll get into it a little bit further. It says this, Have ye not known, have ye not heard, hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, 
And so I looked a little bit further into some of these words. First, the circle of the earth, which the the Hebrew word for that is kug, C-H-U-W-G, which means circle, circuit, or compass. And... Um, and, and when I, there's another phrase I'm going to pull up because I also looked for in the the Hebrew um, a description of either a planet or a globe or a sphere, and you can't find any of those words in in the in the Hebrew. But there is a description, and there's one verse where a ball is described. And so I'll, I'll pull that out um, in in just a minute. But I wanted to also talk about the earth, where it says upon the circle of the earth. And earth is Eretz, E-R-E-T-S, in Hebrew. And it represents land or earth. But some of the descriptions of it... Um, Country, territory, district, region, tribal territory, or piece of ground. So the earth, you know, is basically to, I was talking about like land, ground, soil. All right, now the other, um, another few words that I pulled out just to give, give us a better understanding of what this passage is talking about is uh, I looked into tent, and the word for tent is ohel, O-H-E-L. And it means, in the Hebrew, nomad's tent, symbolic of wilderness life or transience, a dwelling, home, or habitation, uh, the sacred tent of Jehovah, or the tabernacle, uh, tabernacle is also another word which um, the the Hebrew is it's the same, O oh, hell, O H E L, and so when it describes here in this passage um, that stretched out the heaven as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, so the circle of the earth is meant as a you know is and with its heaven spread out as a curtain is in the shape of a tent or a tabernacle and that this is where the inhabitants of the earth dwell in where we live and dwell in is upon the circle on this plate um another word that I looked a little bit into was Dwell in, which the Hebrew word is yashab, Y-A-S-H-A-B. And it basically, it says to dwell, remain, sit, abide. To sit, sit down, to be set, to remain, stay, to dwell, have one's abode, to be inhabited, a set place, to cause to sit, to cause to abide set to cause to dwell and so uh, to be inhabited to make to dwell and so um, it's again it's my opinion that what is being described in this passage as the circle of the earth uh, is actually speaking about a flat earth a disc a flat earth plane and that the stars or the heavens as a curtain that is spreadeth upon over, you know, like in the Bible code I had, canopy, dome, you know, these kinds of words, um, that that's the structure that it's describing this flat, you know, the earth as um, the foundations as a flat disc, um, a round circle, and that this is where we are to dwell upon, and that the heavens are spread out as a curtain above us and that the as a model it represents the tent 
or a tent or a tabernacle. All right. Um, the only passage that you can find, because as I mentioned, there's no there's no descriptions in the Hebrew, no words or you know scriptures in the the Torah which describe a sphere, a globe, or a planet. But there is one that describes a ball. And it's in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 18, where it says this, He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. There shalt thou die, and there the chariots of thy glory shall be the shame of thy Lord's house. And so when you look up this word ball, it's different from the word that we have as circle in Isaiah chapter 40. Uh, The word is duer, D-U-W-R, duri. Um, And it, it, it says, the definition says, a circle, ball, or pile. Ball, turn, or round about. And so uh, a ball in a circle is different in connotation as far as the word that is used to describe either or. And that, in my opinion, if in Isaiah chapter 40 it was meant to describe a, a planet or a sphere or a globe, that it would use, it would have used this word, dur, or duri, instead of chuk. Um, there's a couple other passages that I want to bring up, and then I'll go into the um, the questions that y'all had remaining from last week, as well if if you have any other questions for this week, I'll be glad to answer them. But I um I want to share this as well, really quick. I was part of a panel this past Thursday. I did an interview with my friend Mr. Rowe and Mark Sargent, which a lot of you the, who have begun to do some research into this area, um, you've listened to his series called the Flat Earth Clues, which he does a really good job of presenting a number of different um, topics which are related to the flat earth and he talks about how it was that he came to understand this as I now have and um, and that another person that is really doing a lot of research and providing a lot of incredible information on this is Rob Skiba, he's done a a series on this. Um, But anyways, really important and critical information um, being covered by both of them. But anyways, uh, I just posted a link in the chat room to the interview, the roundtable that I did with Mark and Mr. Rowe. Uh, I uploaded it to my YouTube site under Endeavor Freedom. Um, And you can find it. It's called Reality Exchange. Uh, And then just keyword search um, Mark Sargent and Zen Garcia, and it'll come up. Uh, Those of you that know my YouTube name, my account is under Endeavor Freedom. It's the most recent upload. I just finished it like 30 minutes ago, and uh, it is available for, for you to check out. All right, so I want to cover um, just a few more passages, and then I'll answer your questions. Just some things which I thought were interesting. All right, in Job, Job 28, where it says, For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and see it under the whole heaven. Um, I looked up end, 
uh, you know, th- th- just to see what it says in the Hebrew, and it says end extremity from the whole of, from among, and of what is included between extremities. The the Hebrew word for that is katsa, k or, or q a t s a h, and it means um, coast corner edge lowest or uttermost. Um, and then I, I looked up the definition for the whole heaven, just to see what it says in the Hebrew. And it says, heaven, heaven, sky, visible heavens, sky, abode of the stars, the visible universe, the sky, the atmosphere, um, which is the Hebrew word for the whole heaven is Shamayim, S-H-A-M-A-Y-I-M. And so that passage is again kind of describing, you know, the the heavens uh, almost like as a dome or a canopy over what would be the the flat earth, and that the ends of the earth that this would be this particular edge, or or what is the um, what we know as Antarctica, this ice wall that encompasses the disk or the plane uh, of the the earth. And the, another thing, um, as far as what we're talking about this, uh, one of the things that I always thought about was, you know, how would the whole earth witness the return of Yeshua? Because it says that as the lightning spreadeth from the east to the west, uh, all the inhabitants of the world would see the return of the Messiah. And it would not it doesn't make sense to me if we're living on a spherical earth um and cuz only those that are on the portion of the earth that are facing could see the return of Christ. But if we are indeed living on a flat earth plane um uh, on a disc and that everybody is you know, able to see um, up into the celestial heavens, and then that makes more sense to me. All right. Um, Oh, here's another one that I wanted to look further into. This is from Job 38. I'm not going to read the whole passage. But it says, Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? And so I looked up that word breadth to see what it says in the Hebrew. And the word is nakab. N-A-C-H-A-B. And it means a wit. Breadth or broad place. And so this word breadth, um, or this, in my opinion, this passage, this verse 18 of Job uh, chapter 38, hast thou perceived or perceived the breadth of the earth? That it's talking about the width of the earth as being, you know, the breadth, the broad place, that it's describing it from. Um, from end to end, or what would be the extrem- extremity of it, is from ice. You know, the whole circle of the Earth, as described in Isaiah 40, and that the Antarctic ice wall would be the limits, and that everything in between would be the broad place, the nakab, or the width. Um, another passage from verse 33 of Job chapter 38, where it says, 
Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Two words that uh, intrigued me were ordinances and dominion. And so I looked those up in the Hebrew as well, utilizing the strong. And again, if you want to confirm what I'm talking about here, you can uh, go to the blueletterbible.org and just click on the Strongs as tool, and you can search out these uh, keyword search or search out the the passages, the actual scripture, and it will show you all of the words that you can look up utilizing Strongs. And so ordinances in the Hebrew means statute, ordinance, limit, enactment, something prescribed. And the Hebrew word is chuka, C-H-U-Q-Q-A-H, um, which means appointed, custom, manner, ordinance, site, statue. All right, the other word. Thou set the dominion thereof. Dominion in the Hebrew means jurisdiction, rule, authority. And the Hebrew word is mishtar. M-I-S-H-T-A-R. And... um. You know, again, it just means the dominion. So, knowest thou the ordinances, uh, the limits, or the statute uh, of heaven? Uh, and canst thou send the dominion, the jurisdiction thereof in the earth? All right, just a couple more, and then I'll get to the actual um, the actual questions. And I'll also answer questions if you have some for today. In Psalm 104, uh, I just want to share with you the the passage, the the scripture of Psalm 104, because I thought this was interesting too in, in the way that it is described. Um, it says, Bless the Lord, Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty, who coverest thyself with light as with a garment, who stretchest out the heaven like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers of flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment, the waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Um, you know, this was after the the flood and that the water was given its limits and that it was um that it was also drained to you know uh where it was to be held its chambers um and but a, a couple things that were interesting about this passage was when it says who laid the foundations of the earth that they should not be removed forever um that that kind of implies to me that the foundations of the earth are immovable. 
and that you know that that the land is not uh, moving. And the last, you know, thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. That this could be talking about the Antarctic ice wall as a limit for the oceans and the waters of the earth, that they are not able to breach this particular limit and that they are all contained therein. Okay, another um another one that I thought was interesting is Psalms one oh nine. Oh no, Psalm nineteen where it says this. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. All right, and so this is interesting. This passage was interesting in that it talks about the, the sun as having to live in the, the tabernacle, in a tabernacle over the earth. And that the sun goes Forth from the end of the heaven and his circuit, a circuit like a revolution, uh, unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. And so I looked up that um, as far as the, the world and also the circuit uh, of, that is being described as far as the the movement of the sun uh, and if again if it's contained within this tabernacle that the tabernacle is like a tent in like a a dwelling place um much like what is described in Isaiah chapter 40 and those that understand the flat earth and the t- description of it and how the sun and the moon work um um and that they are going in a circuit above it that the where the sun is uh, depending on which portion is it is shining over the the earth the other portion is in darkness and that where the edge of that darkness is that this creates what we see as sunrise or sunset but that it is not creeping up over the edge of the earth, but that we are seeing it become visible as far as our perspective of where we are on the earth uh, because the light of the sun in its revolution or as its circuit is actually reaching us. But that the sun and the moon remain above and, and moving in a circuit, in a revolution, above the flat earth plane. All right, so I looked up the word for world. And let me see where it says that. Uh, their line has gone out through all the earth and the words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. And so the end of the world, which again would be the the ice wall, the outer limits of the, the disk or the flat earth plane, and that the sun, the tabernacle 
or the dwelling place of the sun is within the you know the outer limits uh which would place it on the interior of this flat earth plane and that it spirals um from the tropic of cancer to the tropic of capricorn which is basically the middle the equatorial region um which if you are looking at the UN map or the flat earth plane would be the middle portion. So it takes a circuit which keeps it around the middle portion of the uh, the flat earth plane, but that it moves up and down according to uh, the, you know, the movement um, from the Tropic of Cancer or the Tropic of Capricorn depending on the seasons. All right. And so the word for world, uh, Strong's definition is tebel, T-E-B-E-L, and it means um, the earth as moist and therefore inhabited by extension, uh, the globe by implication, which I don't believe that, that you know that it is actually implying that but of course everybody most everybody believes that we live on a globe um it's inhabitant specifically a particular land as babylonia or palestine so that's the word for world again the tabernacle is like a tent a nomad's tent symbolic of wilderness life transience dwelling home habitation so the tabernacle of the sun is a dwelling a home habitation and circuit this is an interesting word um, circuit in the Hebrew is really difficult word to say to kufa tekufa T Q U W P H A H and it means coming round circuit of time or space a turning circuit at the circuit a revolution of the sun a course um time lapse a circuit coming about or end and so in my opinion this this passage is describing the revolution of the sun over the flat earth plane, which, you know, is again described as a tent, and that um, it is within the confines of the the limits, uh, the ends of the world, which are, again, this, uh, this Antarctic ice wall. And that this is exactly... If you understand what I'm talking about, this is exactly how the sun and the moon spin over the flat earth plane according to the description that is also given to us in Isaiah chapter 40. Now, I want to revisit real quick um, the Bible code that I shared with you and why it was that I selected those particular keywords. Because in my opinion, and I'm about to get to your questions and your commentary, um, in my opinion, these keywords act, absolutely embody what we are talking about and the model of the earth if indeed we are living on a flat earth that there would be a canopy as described in Isaiah 40 and that the, our domain, our dwelling place, that the shape of the flat earth as a disc with the heavens spread out as a curtain above it, that it would take the shape of a tent uh, or a canopy um, and dome and that you know, again, flat earth, even um, that, you know, the 
the earth being flat and flat all the way to the horizon that even with the um the way that water always assumes a flat it's its nature to assume a f- you know a flat orientation and that the oceans when there's no wind or a lake when everything is calm it will be perfectly flat to the horizon and that it would be even um, and that the description of the earth as a circle uh, was the reason I chose ring as one of the keywords and that um, the ends of the earth or the end of the world that this would be represented by the edge and so those keywords flat earth canopy Tent, as well as truth, you know, because I wanted to know whether this was truth or not. A ring, edge, even, and dome, all of them, in my opinion, as matrix, um, I believe, confirm this as premise. And so, let me now go to the chat room. And for those that are just now joining us, what I was describing with those keyword searches was the using BibleCodeWisdom.com, that particular website, the Bible code that I found in connection to this as topic. All right, so let me go now to the questions y'all have. All right. One second, I'm posting this, and then I'll get to them. All right, the new ones... All right, let me look first at the commentary that y'all are sharing now. See if there's anything of relevance. All right. Looking over the commentary. Um... Somebody did say that, you know, if all of this information coming out now, if it is part of some end time deception, and if uh, if it is, why would the elites be doing that? And, you know, I, I have no idea because, in my opinion, the deception is the other way, that they are trying to convince us that we live in on a globe and that all of you know are living in the goldilocks zone and all of that came out as just random uh per chance happening and that there's no real special covenant between the creator and humanity and that we're just you know one of those random things that happen and that there are millions of other worlds out there um, where there's life because, you know, a, a planet happens to be in that same Goldilocks zone, uh, a certain distance away from the sun. And that, that as a deception, serves t- better uh, to convince us that we are indeed not special and that, um, you know, again, there's no special covenant with the Creator and that, Um, we just, you know, also that we just evolved of apes, we evolved of monkeys, or that the fallen angels, these ancient aliens, they were the ones that uh, manipulated our DNA or that 
having crossbred with some monkey somewhere that we were the result of that hybridization or, you know, some genetic experimentation or whatever, and that they are the real benefactors, the real creators of humanity, and that there's no uh, God, um, that, you know, the round earth or the spherical earth or the the global earth, uh, in my opinion, it serves more um, as far as their getting us to buy into other aspects of you know, evolution or things of that nature. Uh, and now this whole ancient alien theology and, and belief, um, that that serves a greater purpose than the the flat earth. You know, and why would they now if be trying to convince us that we live on a flat earth and, and how would that play into the great deception. Uh, it's my opinion that this information coming forth now is part of the spirit being poured out on all flesh and then all the secrets coming to light. All right. Uh, question from Melly or Murr. What I would like to know is if the earth is flat, how does this chain the country's of the end times and I think that's a good question and um, like from what I understand supposedly on the global map they show Greenland as being as big as Africa but supposedly in truth um, that Greenland is only like one eighth of the size of Africa and that Africa is much larger uh, as a continent, uh, and that their theft and their decimation of the peoples there in Africa, um, that one of the reasons they show that in that way is to not, I guess, have people be as concerned, uh, or if it was a larger area or, you know, bigger proportion uh, of the earth and the resources um not for sure you know but that might be one of the the reasons um also mer says i should have said the references to the northeast as nations rise against nation if they change this info what areas of the earth have they changed uh i think even whether it's um, a round earth or a flat earth, that the way, you know, of course, if the earth is not coming to a point in the way that it's portrayed in the South Pole, that the the way that the flat earth map is oriented, there is some difference, especially if you are in the southern hemispheres. But um, as far as the Northern Hemisphere and the countries that are in the Northern Hemisphere, it's all still really similar. But that if, I guess, if there was a global war and you were wanting to invade Australia from, you know, say Chile or Antarctica, that you might have to consider the logistics that it would be a much longer process and that the distance would be greater. But other than that, um, I don't really see how it would be much, much difference. Um, another question I keep coming from seriously. I keep coming back to the show because I find it fascinating that someone that owes their very existence to the physics of a round world can believe it's flat. Uh, I don't know what you are meaning, the physics of a round world. Um, and you'll you'll have to bring clarification because I went into the study of this in order to debunk the flat earth as 
premise. And I totally do not believe it. In fact, when I was in college, I studied um, astronomy as my science. And I understood the movements of the heavens, or at least I thought uh, the movements of the heavens and the way that um, the the moon, how it is that the different phases of the, of the moon, I totally believe that all that was created uh, because the of the earth spinning around the sun. And it explain you, it, the way that they explain it in astronomy, it absolutely explains what we are observing and what we are seeing. But the way that I understand it now as our living on a flat earth also explains it. Um, and that, you know, the, there's different premises of, that it can be described in different ways. But again, going back to the things that some of the things that made me realize or helped me to understand that what we had been taught as living on a globe that, um, that first the curvature of the earth and how the experiments that have been done by scientists going back to the 1800s um, that you can't, you can even with like being able to see a lighthouse 60 miles out, according to the, you know, the way that uh, the curvature of the earth is supposed to play out on a, um, on a global or a, spher a spherical earth, the spherical trigonometry that you should not be able to see a lighthouse or a cityscape or even like the a Statue of Liberty from such a great distance that it should be, um, according to the curvature of the earth, it should be so far below the horizon that you would not be able to see it. Um, and and this has been proven, uh, this has been debunked. People can see the Statue of Liberty for for up to 60 miles away, that um, cityscapes, both in going opposite directions, like um, there's a point where people can see 60 miles away the cityscape of Philadelphia, and in the opposite direction, the cityscape of um, of New York City, and at that distance, they should be so far below the horizon that at least they appear that the building should be leaning away from the observer, and that uh, portions of what can be seen should be below the horizon and not be visible. And so these were things, this was just one thing that made me realize, it helped me to understand that uh, we're not living on a, uh, a a global earth. The other things were some of the, the videos, these weather balloon videos and rocket, you know, the GoPro videos of um, rocket launches on the outside of these boosters and how no matter how high you go up, the earth remains level and flat and um, completely level all the way to the horizon. And um, the other thing was, is if we are on a earth that is spinning uh, a thousand miles an hour to the east at the equator, how is it that you can get in a plane and fly at 500 miles an hour east and end up in an hour 500 miles away. And the same goes for flying west. When if we're spinning on an earth at 1,000 miles an hour, uh, you, should, you shouldn't be able to, um, you shouldn't be able to, you know, catch up with the earth because it is spinning faster. And you would actually, if you were flying to the east at 500 miles an hour, you would lose distance and that if you were flying to the west and the earth was spinning say you're flying 500 miles an hour and um 
in in the earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour the other way. If you are in the air for an hour, you should be at least fifteen hundred miles away um going west because the earth is spinning a thousand miles that way and you spent five hundred miles an hour going uh, an hour away in towards the west you all of that doesn't make sense and it doesn't add up that way because the way that it it, it is if if you fly 500 miles an hour towards the west you end up 500 miles away and of course there is some um some discrepancy because of the wind shear and the way that the winds um according to the wind but for the most there's not a huge difference and there should be a huge difference if we are living on a spinning earth and then the other thing is the centrifugal forces uh, it should be totally different from living in a you know at the equator than living at the north pole um those are just some of the things and then there was the um you know the, all, many scientific experiments that were done by uh, scientists that prove that you could see like this one experience uh, of a a boat that was was watched going 6 miles out and that at every mile um uh, at the first mile it should have been 8 you know um 8 inches below the horizon that it was able to be seen clearly all the way going 6 miles out on this flat canal and every portion of the boat was seen. Um, there are other videos, and you can find these all on YouTube too, of people that show that the whole uh, debate that uh, that that they say proves that we live on a, a, a globe, um, and that a boat will disappear from the bottom until finally the mass disappears because of the curvature of the earth but with these uh, high powered telescopes and and also high powered cameras with extraordinary now zoom lenses uh they have proved that that is absolutely false and that does not happen that you can see uh, the f- entirety of the of the boat um that portion of it that is above the water line all the way out miles and miles and miles away and that no portion of it disappears below the horizon and that does not happen on um if we are living on a curved earth let me check the chat room once again Oh, here's another thing, because um, somebody says, uh, Murr said, my hubby was listening and said, if you stand on the Arctic Circle, you watch the sun go around and you will be convinced. Uh, I'm not sure of what you would be convinced at. But you can also, at different portions of the year, you can see the sun actually in its full circuit. Um, What we were talking about in that one passage uh, in the scripture and it stays above the horizon for 24 hours at a time and and how is that possible if we are living on a you know a spherical earth and we're at this 23 degree incline and that at some point we are going to be on the opposite side or that portion of the earth with which is in darkness there's if if we are living on a spherical earth there's no possibility of our being able to see the sun in its full revolution in its complete circuit without it ever dipping below the horizon 
and yet there are absolutely um, there's videos you can find on YouTube where they show this and what happens is that you will see the sun at its lowest point um, it reaches the horizon when it is directly south but where it's supposed to set in the west and rise in the east, this doesn't happen because the sun stays above the horizon and you see it nearing its closest point on the horizon when it reaches all the way south. And then it rises again and in its full circuit, it remains above the horizon. And you just could not do that on a spinning um a, a spherical earth uh, Link says I just find it very difficult to believe everyone on the International Space Station is lying and all the data and photos are fake uh, I absolutely thought the same thing um, but if you look a little bit into some of the International Space Station footage and how it has been hoaxed, what you find is that there are videos where you see air bubbles coming up as well as scuba divers um, in, 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 like inside the, uh, or swimming around what is supposed to be space. Uh, there was an actual scuba diver with a scuba diver tank on his back that was seen in the footage, or you see these air bubbles that are rising up, um, and which would not happen in space. And so how, why would they be faking any of the footage at all? And there was another video that I showed that I posted on my website where supposedly there was being, you know, it was a spacewalk and they were, doing some work on the International Space Station, and it was showing the, the sun rising uh, uh, over what was supposedly the edge of the Earth. And then all of a sudden, click, the full Earth became visible. And then there was another portion of the video where the Earth disappears, the entire Earth disappeared, and what we come to realize from both of those projections in the video that um, was shown of, of live as the supposed spacewalk is that the Earth or the appearance or what is uh, supposedly below the space station, this was a green screen and that the movement of the Earth across it, uh, it was giving us, giving us, the viewer, the illusion that they were in space. And this is just, you know, two of the um, of the many different uh, incidences and 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 different uh, videos that are out there, which NASA themselves hoax. Why would they hoax any of it if all of this were true, and if the International Space Station indeed existed, and um, and that was going on? Why would they have to hoax any of it? And then if you look into um, the depiction of, you know, the Apollo, whichever, 11, I think it was, the how they were showing us the, the Earth as a, a globe, how they faked that using the porthole of the inside of the lunar module, and that they were much closer to the Earth, but that the astronaut got in between the um, the video uh, of the supposed round earth and the camera that was shooting the video. Why would they fake that? And also the, you know, the supposed lunar landings. Uh, there's many uh, videos that have been released that show that there's multiple light sources and there's shadows where there should not be shadows. And um, all of that has been faked. There's, you know, images of the supposed earth rise or the, you know, the portion of the earth um, in in the background of a Apollo photo. And it was been, it's been photoshopped. 
you can actually see the cutout that has been pasted in. And so uh, all these things, in in my opinion, I, I don't believe NASA at all. Why are they hoaxing any of it? And if they're hoaxing any of it, should we believe them at all? And it's not difficult. Go to... Um, Go to YouTube and just type in ISS or NASA hoax or, you know, the moonwalk uh, or lunar landing, Apollo and lunar landing hoaxes. And you'll find so much evidence which verifies that they hoaxed it. And not only, um, you know, the I, I talked about the how the Apollo, um, how they faked the supposed image of or the you know the image of the earth uh, as a as a globe there was a video that was not supposed to be released to the public which talks of, the NASA astronauts are talking on a back channel to Houston and they're talking about how they're hoaxing it and so I'm not making these things up Go look them up for yourself. I didn't believe any of this. In fact, before I began this investigation, I had believed that we had gone to the moon. And I believed uh, the NASA, you know, that the astronauts had gone to the moon. I didn't believe any of that had been hoaxed until I found and viewed the videos of the hoaxing taking place. Now, you know, uh, I, I realize that some of you in the chat room um, have gotten mad at me or, or you know, uh, that I've ruffled your feathers. Um, but I didn't believe these things. And I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to, to do your own homework, to go and look these things up for yourself. Because I didn't believe it either until I saw for myself. Uh, Link says... But how do we know that these videos talking about the hoaxes aren't hoaxes themselves? Because they're using, uh, using official NASA video, and you can see the hoax taking place in the NASA videos. And this is, these are videos that you can even find on NASA websites. I mean, these are things that uh, NASA has released themselves. So, you know, people don't have to make up uh, hoaxes to confirm that NASA is hoaxing it, they're doing it themselves. And so, and yeah, I, you know, even with satellites, uh, I totally believe satellites existed. Then I, you know, looked up the, the temperature of the thermosphere that supposedly satellites are flying in, and with the components that they are supposed to be made out of, they can't exist in the thermosphere. They can't be orbiting in the thermosphere. And so these are things, uh, and then look up, you know, look for images, uh, look for videos of the Earth from space. They're non-existent. Or look for, you know, and Rob Skiba has, has um, done great work on this, where he shows Official NASA images of the, the supposed spherical global Earth from space, and the size of the continents are different. In one image, you have um, huge, where the you know the North American continent is much bigger than in a different official NASA image, or where they have um, have pasted the same cloud formation over and over into a supposed composite image of the Earth from space. So, you know, these things exist, and they're easy to find out there. And if you did any kind of real research uh, for yourself, you'll, you'll find the same things that I did. I didn't believe this at first. Um, I totally uh, thought this was all just a waste of time. And I 
now having looked into it for several weeks now, I find too many lies and no real, I mean, if we have all these satellites, all these hundreds of satellites up there, how come we don't have just tons of video of the Earth from space in complete rotation and, you know, going from night and day over and over? Uh, and how come there's not thousands of these videos if this is indeed what's happening and um, it's so easy to, you know, because if they have the capacity and that all this technology, all these satellites exist, why not show us the videos? Why not show us images? And, um, you know, the images that they've already shown us, the videos already shown us, when they turn out to be fakes and forgeries and hoaxes, why should we believe NASA? We shouldn't. And so that's where I am with all of that. Um, Ling says, I think it's great what you're doing. It takes a very strong person to stand up and expose and say things that go against everything we've ever been led to. Oh, yeah, it is no easy task, sister. And I didn't want to be the one to, you know, to come out against all this. Um, I was one of those that made fun of the flat earthers. You know, even my the open point revolution radio uh, show, I didn't even realize, but I was making fun of the flat earthers in my opening poem. And it wasn't until I come to discernment on this that I realized that, you know, and they're making fun of myself. Link asked me, do you believe there was life on Mars and ancient worlds? And uh, I still believe that as well until I can, you know, otherwise. I, I still believe that some of what we see, uh, some of the images, um, things that have been released, and again, I don't know if these are forgeries, the face and most things of that nature. Uh, I believe that the rebel angels in here, even on this earth, um, from what we see, that the megalithic structures were created by them. That the cities that we see at the bottom of the oceans, um, you know, that have been and that have been found, artifacts have been pulled up from the bottom of the ocean. That, and these structures were created at a time when we were hunter-gatherers as far as pre-Adamic humanity. We couldn't have achieved those kind of things, and especially not, you know, we can't even now replicate the creation of these megalithic sites. And so I absolutely still believe that there are things uh, to this. And another question from Link, do you think that the planets are balls? Uh, I have to believe that they are, um, but I, you know, I don't believe that the Earth is anymore. But until I know different and better, um, you know, I'm, I'm still learning things. I, I haven't ironed out everything. I'm still um, up in arms as far as trying to, you know, even the things that I have learned in the past, I'm. I'm still trying to, you know, come to discernment on how much of it is lies and how much of it isn't. And why it is that they had to lie about this in the first place. And, you know, it, it has been no easy task because all, even the people that, you know, gave me credibility, whatever that is, as far as my work in conspiracies that I've brought forth in, um, you know, in all of my books, they think I'm totally far out there now and have gone uh, past the breaking point in looking into this as topic and in doing the shows that I've done on it. But, you know, I'm just a truth seeker. And I want to know what the truth is no matter what. And if this indeed 
is the mother of all conspiracies, um, I want to know why it has been propagated, why we have been led into believing this web of deceit. And so um, I know I've lost a lot of listeners and a lot of uh, over this topic, but, you know, I'm, I stand with God and I stand with truth. Um, I'll talk to you all next week. And I believe that the reason I found the Bible code, you know, is just further confirmation of this as topic. We're going to be going into ancient, um, some of the ancient uh, um, scriptures and some of the extra canonical, extra biblical books beginning again next week. God bless all. Good night. Research um, and find enough evidentiary truth to just dismiss it altogether as possibility. And so um, li- deciding to listen to my listeners and deciding to um, actually watch a few of the videos that they had sent me um, I was led to more questions than answers. And I was compelled to do greater investigation and to spend more time on really looking into this as ample possibility. And so, um, and I'm also going to, just so you know, I'm going to answer the rest of the questions that. You had posted in chat room that I'd never got chance to get into last show. And I have a little bit more time today. And so I'll be able to do that as well as I want to share a few other things. Um, Certain passages from the scripture which also describe what we see as... um, a model for the earth and those that a lot of people um, cite when they believe that, you know, that the Bible is talking about a round or spherical earth. And I'm also going to release today um, a Bible code, which I discovered because that's one of the things that I do now whenever I get into a topic that is highly controversial and um, what a lot of people consider to be unscriptural, like the after the publication of my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain, I was led to seek out a code and actually discovered it. And not only one, but seven matrices which um, confirmed the premise of that book. And these are kind of things, you know, the whole equal letter sequencing, uh, the mathematical code, which is has to be totally divinely inspired, that is found within the, the Hebrew Torah. And if you don't know how all that works out, I'm not going to go into it in any great depth. Uh, on this particular show because there's so much I want to cover. But basically, it's um, you skip a certain amount of letters and you put the first five books of the scriptures, the Torah, the Pentateuch, all together without any space. You just run them all together in um, one long... Um, just like one long sentence. And then with the use of a computer, you can get it to keyword search certain things, you know, like how we used to do those uh, hidden crossword puzzles, not crossword puzzles, but hidden word searches in elementary school where you would seek them out diagonally, horizontal, vertical, um and and that you could you could find you know certain words this way well the bible code works in similar fashion and so i was able to find uh, a code 
And I'm going to paste a link for it, and you can pull it up for yourself. And you can also do this same research for yourself to confirm that I had indeed found it. And you can see the keywords that I searched, which in my opinion are confirmation of this as concept. And uh, for those that have access to the chat room, I did post a link there. You can click click it and it'll take you to a website called BibleCodeWisdom.com, which allows you to search out codes without first having to download any software or buy or purchase any software. And it also allows you to not have to know Hebrew and to be able to search out codes in English, which is very relevant for uh, individuals like myself that are not um, able to, you know, decipher the Hebrew and the, the translations. Um, that's not exactly true, Cersei. Cersei says you can pull a code from anything, and that's absolutely not true at all. Uh, in fact, uh, and especially when you have multiple words, you might be able to find one or two words, and, and certainly there are other books that, you know, codes have been found in. But uh, when you have m a numerous number of words, um, you cannot find codes just in any document. But anyways, I'm not going to deliberate over that with you. Um, but the code that I found has these keywords. And you can pull it up for yourself and look you know, find it, and and I felt like all of these keywords are um, essential to this as topic. First, flat, of course, flat, earth, and then canopy, tent, because Isaiah 40 describes the the earth as a circle and that the heavens. Um, you know, as a curtain above and and that it's like a tent. And also truth, ring, because um it's my opinion that Isaiah forty, what it's describing as the circle of the earth is a is a ring, not a sphere, not a globe or um or a ball. Which um one of the things I'll also cover today is some of the Strong's concordance on that particular passage. We'll go into that next. Um, but ring and edge and even, like the way flat, you know, the earth being flat or even. And also a dome, which, uh, like tent, you know, it describes um, the heavens as being spread out like a curtain and that we are living on this disc or this um, plane, this flat earth plane, that the heavens are over us like a, a dome or a canopy or, you know, and that the the earth as a model together with the heavens, the celestial heavens uh, is like a tent, as it's described in Isaiah 40. And so you can see all of these key words are similar um, as far as this particular topic. And the, you know, usually if, usually you don't find more than three or four words in a matrix, in a matrix when you're searching out a Bible code. And so I believe it's very relevant that I was able to find Have I? Have we all been held hostage to some secret societal Freemasonic accord, a pervasive deception so colossal that only those in the know understand planetary situation? And do the global elite, 
celebrate such manipulation, honoring such conquest, flaunting insider knowledge and privilege, flying the United Nations flag with depiction of a flat earth holding all nations in singular, circular embrace near the building which best represents their assertion of power, the UN building and throne of world government and new world order. Hello, friends. I'm your host, San Garcia. This is Fallen Angels TV, and this is fourth in a series uh, that I've done on this particular topic, and I promise to leave it alone after this particular show Um, unless I find some just extremely relevant and important information that I need to share with you or I have as guests um, one of those individuals that is on the cutting edge of this as topic Um, because it seems like it is um, being hyped up by the mainstream as far as and conspiratorial press, I mean the mainstream alternative and conspiratorial um, as far as media outlets, and that for some reason it is being brought to the forefront of the collective conscious of those that do this kind of research and and this kind of investigation and and so that was that was one of the reasons why I myself decided to actually give it a go and to take some time to uh, to really investigate it with an open mind suspending my former educational bias as I mentioned in poem and um I really didn't think it would pan out to anything at all And that I would, in in the most, waste one evening or one day of... I am perceiving the creation with renewed conviction, deliberating over whether I'd been taught a misnomer of lies, the likes of which had formerly entrenched my educational bias towards habitation upon a spherical earth, comparison to every globe sitting atop a teacher's desk. As inheritors of the grand matrix, we as children are indoctrinated into speculative assumptions based upon a carefully crafted web of deceit, so all-consuming is my postulation that we live on a planetary globe truly warranted. Awakening makes one question everything thought relevant, all that one had once so innocently accepted in assurance as evidentiary truth. All must be reassessed upon the certainty that there is no absolute truth when evaluating the preponderance of lies emblazoned unto our unquestioned resolve as clean child mind slate. And so once again I find myself in that zone of nihilist persuasion, reality shattered and manifest knowing shaken to the core, deliberating over what I thought seminal truth This challenge strikes at the core of who and where we are as people, our most foundational belief of living upon a blue marble and that we're spinning counterclockwise in a similarly rotating planetary system with angelic sun as its vibrant diamond center. We are informed that primordially ejected bodies spit out from the core of stars, results in planetary accretion, and that the Earth as cosmological debris gravitationally attracted enough mass 
to assume orbit as planet around our sun, itself contained in another greater orbit around some grand universal center. A theoretical black hole science asserts, though no one has ever seen, of such immense pull, light cannot escape its destroying grasp. 